Hi, welcome to the Fit and Healthy Today show. And last week we talked about erectile dysfunction uh, and impotence. And this time, as promised, I'm going to handle also sexual dysfunction in women. Pardon the spelling mistakes. Apparently I wasn't paying much attention and I discovered four of them. Let's see if you guys can find it like a puzzle on how many I made. Um, <sighs> women are more complicated than guys, as most guys probably already know. But basically defined, it's the inex in inability to experience pleasure during sex or the lack of drive to have sex. And when I looked up the statistical data, 48% of women here in the United States, they have no desire for sex at all. So that's almost half the women here in the United States. And you've got to scratch your heads and wonder why. And we're going to address some of those issues today and then some of the supplements as well that can help overcome some of those issues today. <sighs> Multiple causes. Um, estrogen dominance and menopause or perimenopause can be a major contributing factor. We have a very estrogen dominant environment with all the petrochemicals, the pesticides, the fertilizers, the plastics. We're exposed to excessive amounts of these what are called xenoestrogens in the multitudes. And what that does is it makes us women very estrogen dominant and progesterone and testosterone deficient, thereby taking away a lot of our sex drive. When we have lowered levels of estrogen and testosterone, oftentimes in addition to chemicals causing, we have a lot of stress in, in um, everyday life. And oftentimes women get so stressed out from their jobs and managing their families that they end up with adrenal exhaustion, which can also lend itself then in turn to an underactive thyroid which in turn can lend itself to gaining weight. And this is kind of like a cycle. Gain weight, have less sex drive, be estrogen dominant. It's like a vicious cycle. So the key here, boys and girls, is we've got to reduce the level of estrogens that you're consuming and that you're exposed to. We've got to reduce the stress levels through diet and exercise. And we've got to address thyroid issues either via progesterone or with proper medications for the thyroid. Like I said, as women, we're more complicated. What can I say? Other than the physical issues uh, involved in this, we have a multitude of medications that interfere with either the libido or the lack to obtain or an orgasm. And I was very specific on here on what these very various medications do. Antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications, they delay organism, orgasms, and they also reduce libido. Wham, wham, double punch. So, so while you're trying to reduce your anxiety and your depression, you can't have sex with your husband. So then it lends itself to more depression and more conflict. So before you go on these medications, boy, I'll tell you, I'd really evaluate a lot of these other factors and other things we've discussed in prior shows but that's going to be a side effect. High blood pressure medications are going to be vaginal dryness and they inhibit orgasms. Obviously, if a woman can't have orgasms, it's going to be a problem in that she's not going to want to have sex because there's no pleasure involved. Leading on here, painkillers completely stop all orgasms. So if you're on any types of pain medications, legal or illegal, good luck on that issue. Birth control pills can permanently, and this is also um, uh, HRT, which are um, you know, your estrogens, your primers, they can permanently affect your sex drive. Permanently. Because they change and alter estrogen and progesterone levels, and the body always seeks homostasis. So, before you go on any of these types of things for long periods of time, and sex is important to you, you better be reviewing whether or not you're going to want to go on any of these medications. For women, we also have an emotional component to this, guys. Sorry about that. And what that means is that our guys have to give us emotional love and support. And oftentimes, guys will come home from work. They won't shower. 
You know, they burp at the dinner table. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll pat you on the butt, but there's no loving and hugging and they want to have sex. Women, we have an emotional component to ourselves. And this is proven by research data. We require hugging and loving. We just do. It's part of our nature and part of actually what turns on our hormones. So without hugging and loving and what we call foreplay, oftentimes it's very difficult for women to have any sexual pleasure at all. So come home, shower, give her some hug and loving. It's very, very necessary. Women smell our olfactory glands. We smell much more intensely than guys do. So you got to shower. And don't try to cover up with colognes and stuff like that. It just grosses us out. Shower, look good for us. Give us some emotional support and love. And seriously, that emotional component, they say, can make an effect up to 78% difference in women. So that's a big percentage. Um, vitamin and nutrient deficiencies. Um, I'll go through some of that as well, too. We can't manufacture certain hormones without them. So what results is if we don't have these key little pieces, it's kind of like a big giant puzzle. Us women got emotional components, we can smell things, we have pheromones, we have estrogens, progesterone, testosterone. We've got all these things working together in order for uh, us to have or achieve libido and an orgasm. These pieces all have to fit together. Sorry guys, like I said, we're much more complicated. This being said, let's try and address some issues that maybe can resolve this and resolve these issues. Number one, you've got to consider organic fruits and vegetables. You've got to, got to, got to. And I know most people, when I say that, they blow me off and they're going to go down to the local uh, store and they're going to buy their broccoli and their apples and all of that. Do you realize in the research that I read, there's enough estrogen in a non-organic apple, your standard apple you get at the grocery store, to change a woman's mood? Or a can of soda? enough estrogens from all the plastic that it's leeches to change a woman's mood. So, can you imagine throwing on potatoes sprayed in hydrazine, a nice little hamburger that's full of uh, chemical estrogens and fats that block sexual desire. And what are you gonna get? You're gonna get sexual dysfunction. So, we've gotta do organic fruits and vegetables. We need essential fatty acids in our diet. You know, my grandma, when I was a little girl, and my mom too, would set out platterfuls of nuts, and us kids would eat it by the droves. If you don't have adequate amounts of good fats in the diet, you can't stabilize hormones. As a matter of fact, you can't manufacture some of these hormones. So as you're downing your sugar, and your soda, and your rock stars, and all the other uh, types of high caffeine drinks, think about what you're doing as far as when you get home at night and why you're so exhausted and why you're so tired and you have no sex drive. Um, eating lean organic meats and eggs only. Now, our meats are full of growth hormones. Oh God, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, just name it. So you think you're eating meat and you're not getting any of the pesticides. Hey, I'm not eating fruit and vegetables. No. You're getting those chemicals again, and they are very hormone disruptive. Now, we're not just talking about sexual dysfunction here. We're also talking about cancers, breast cancers that have been shown to rise in women that don't eat grass-fed organic beef. All of that arises. You want to avoid all trans fats. Oh, my gosh, you got to look for them. It's the shortenings. And soda, good luck. You know, soda, like I said, it has enough estrogen in a can of soda to change a woman's mood. So therefore, you got to avoid those types of foods. Please contemplate eating organics and organic meats, wholesome fruits and vegetables. And I'll tell you, you can see a difference within a week or two, seriously, in how you feel, your energy levels, all of that. It makes a substantial difference. Now, I didn't put this component in here because I figured it was a, a, a given but exercise is vital to increase circulation, to raise endorphins, to help you feel better, to give you vitality and energy. If you're going to be a slug sitting there eating french fries and hamburgers and then come in to me and ask me why you aren't able, why you have no libido or able to get an orgasm, 
There's your answer right there. It's your lifestyle. The lifestyle changes have to change. And when we consider that 50% of women have no sex drive, that's not talking about the other 30% who are minimal, then we're in deep caca if we don't change things. Supplements. Now, the supplements that I have written down here are all supplements that have been very well researched. So don't let anybody tell you that they haven't been because they have been. And some of which are used by some of our local doctors. And some of these apply to guys as well, too. But here, remember today, we're addressing the women. A good multiple vitamin. Since most of the foods are not like they were 75 years ago when we're eating things out of depleted soil, even the organic sometimes, they may not have pesticides and herbicides, but they oftentimes don't have adequate amounts of vitamins and minerals. A good multiple vitamin, not from your local grocery store or from a company that's on Standard & Poor's. We, we want somebody that's got a good vitamin, that has good testings that you know is going to absorb. Borage oil for hormonal stabilization. And we combine borage oil in combination with fish oil. Now, if you're, not a, if you're a good nut eater, you can strike this. You won't need it. If you eat walnuts, almonds, and pecans, mind you, organic again, because nuts are heavily sprayed. Fish oil aids in lubrication in combination with borage oil. It also does something chemically uh, to the brain. It makes us more stable in our, um, what we call neurotransmitters, as far as our serotonin and GABA levels. And those are kind of important, and once again, in this, in this big puzzle of sexual desire, to have adequate amounts of fatty acids. And most of the time, we're not getting them in our diet, so therefore supplementation is necessary. Esther C. Now, vaginal tissue is very pliable, flexible tissue, and I get a lot of complaints from women that they get a lot of vaginal dryness and that type of thing. And when you combine fatty acids along with C, it keeps that tissue from being so delicate and soft. And so therefore, you can handle uh, a, a longer sexual relations other than two or three minutes. You want something that's going to help reduce stress and help you better process your, um, your hormones through your liver. Vitamin C in combination with the B vitamin is very, very important. Now, there's tons of studies that are out there most recently, studies that have been done in the last year, and we have a local doctor that recommends this oftentimes for healing um, post-op um, from knee replacements and things like that, but he also recommends this for his patients that have these issues. And for women, the standardized dosage, we're going to talk L-arginine and citrine. What this does is this incre increases nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide is a vasodilator. So for, in order for women clitorally or internally to feel uh, or to have an orgasm, nitric oxide levels need to rise. Well, what's also interesting about arginine, 73.5% increase in sexual satisfaction when it was taken with a multiple vitamin for women. That's a pretty substantial, um, that's three quarters of the women out there who are in dire need. When you combine that with citrulline, and I have the directions right here as, as directed by the studies that were done, it's going to aid and abet you being able to be able to have a climax and to feel desire and increase libido. But there's also another side effect of arginine. When women take it, it produces something called pheromones. And these pheromones are things that make the guys kind of attracted to us. And the olfactory glands, they can sense it, they can smell it. And so as a result, it makes us more attractive to our mates. So this combination increases sensation, satisfaction, libido, worth a shot. The combination probably will be about 50 bucks a month, just so you're aware, but it will be helpful. There's other things on here I have listed, and there's far more than what I have listed on here of things that we know are effective. Tribulus, uh, a simpler, if taken twice a day, increases libido. Ginkgo biloba. Now, what's interesting, ginkgo biloba, we know for cerebral circulation for the brain, but it also can increase desire, lubrication, and the ability to have an orgasm because it increases circulation. It reduces inflammation. Marapama, improved libido. It was, it was actually studied with a combination of ginkgo biloba and over 80% 80, 80 improvement in satisfaction in women with just these two combinations together. 
Now, we reached down here and, and back to the hormone, the original discussion that we had about the major causes of the sex drive being lost. And, and these ca things can improve, you know, your overall health, well-being, sensation, all of that. As far as the hormones, particularly in women and in this environmentally estrogen dominant um, time that we're living in, progesterone cream, particularly in um, perimenopausal and in menopausal women, can help raise the progesterone levels so that these excessive estrogens that are making women not have so much sexual desire, that the gap is closed between the progesterone and estrogens. And it's just a little bit of progesterone. It's a real, real fine, fine balance, and your healthcare professional can help you find that balance. Testosterone cream. Now, most women say, am I going to start to grow hair on my face? And I'm like going, well, no, it's probably all the androgens from the excessive estrogens from all your um, burgers and fries that you're having that's making you get those little black hairs on your face. It's probably not testosterone. But there are some natural homeopathic testosterone creams that you can put on the thinner parts of your skin that can also raise libido. And I have a lot, dozens of customers that utilize the testosterone cream to help raise their libido as well and to bring them more in balance hormonally. Now we talked about those xenoestrogens that are found in pesticides and chemicals and herbicides and all the wonderful stuff we're ingesting as a typical uh, American. DIM. Now DIM comes from heavy concentrations of broccoli and each one of those little pills is generally about two pounds of broccoli, organic broccoli. And when you take DIM, what it does is it helps you metabolize the estrogens. The xenoestrogens and it gets, gets them out of the body. And if we combine them with a high enough fiber diet, or there's also a fiber called apple pectin that will bind to the xenoestrogens and remove them out of the body, then we can get those estrogen go estrogens gone, get the testosterone and the progesterone levels raised, get circulation going and nutrients, and we can have a normal sex life with pleasure with our husbands. Kind of a complicated subject. Um, there's a lot more that you can read about it. This is just it in a nutshell, and I hope it's helpful to you. Um, there are also uh, certain types of exercises that women can do, actually, to help improve, and you can go online, a lot of which are chakra work. There are some homeopathics that I didn't mention here as well that can help bring the body more back in balance, and, and something called Bach flower essence remedies that emotionally can make a woman a little bit more stable to where she's not so anxious and, and uh, upset all the time. Um, I want to conclude this. Um, I know a lot of people aren't big fans of Dr. Laura, but I heard something from Dr. Laura about a year ago, and I thought this was really interesting. She had a caller that called in, and the caller was complaining that you know she just didn't have a desire to have sex and she was too tired at night, and la da 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 Well, Dr. Laura asked her whether or not her husband was pleasing her, and she said, well, yeah, you know, he's, he, he tries, he does a good job, and she said, well, I'm confused. She said, you work all day, you work hard, you take care of your kids and all this stuff, and in the evening, you want to miss your reward? And so by changing how the woman looked at seeing sex at night as being her reward of being with her husband and that companionship, it can change the way women look at that as well too. So anyway, I hope that helps. Next, we're going to be moving on to the research portion of our show. Thank you very much. Welcome to the research portion of our show, and with us today is Ralph Turciano. Ralph? Thank you for that intro. Well, to start off, as far as a curiosity question, is one popular electronic device today which has found out that can make you sterile, but by also lowering your testosterone levels, your free testosterone levels. Raise your total, but lowers your free. If you can guess what it is, I'll tell you at the end of the segment. All right, on to this. What if I told you there was a supplement which if you took for about four years or so, even though the study went over 22 years total, will lower your risk of developing any form of prostate cancer by 20%. 
In fact, so strong, it will lower your chance of developing lethal prostate cancer by up to 60%. Well, I want to tell you that ahead of time just so you didn't prejudice what it was. It's coffee. It did not make a difference whether it was decaf or caffeinated. What they discovered, it contained a lot of beneficial compounds that act as antioxidants. Ironically, coffee is the number one source of antioxidants for most of the U.S. population. Reduces inflammation, regulates insulin, which they found that all may contribute to prostate cancer. And this was published in the May 17th journal of the National Cancer Institute. They also said that it was an average of six cups of coffee a day that these men drank. But even drinking one to three cups of coffee, did it make a difference decaffeinated or caffeinated, reduce your chance of developing prostate cancer or lethal prostate cancer by up to 30%. Pretty interesting from something simple that's been around. Again, coffee, not melted ice cream warmed up into a big glass. It's coffee, not you know what I'm talking about. All right, now up to something called preeclampsia, which is basically very popular among women. Supposedly, one third of women get this uh, infliction. And this was published in the British Medical Journal. What they discovered was this. When they added L-arginine with vitamins, L-arginine is a common amino acid, and they also related that preeclampsia, preeclampsia is directly related to the lack of L-arginine in a person's diet. But when they added L-arginine with vitamins, the vitamins ironically didn't do it on their own. It had to have adequate arginine to do the job. It reduced the chance of preeclampsia down to 12.7%. The placebo group, 30.2% got preeclampsia. They said this means that women in the arginine group plus the vitamin group were significantly less likely to develop preeclampsia compared with the placebo group. However, vitamins alone did not significantly reduce the occurrence of preeclampsia. The team also found that L-arginine plus vitamins significantly reduced the risk of premature birth compared with placebo. So thinking about getting pregnant, hopefully not too susceptible to cold sores, something to think about, multivitamin, arginine. Talk to your doctor about it, but from going from one third chance of getting preeclampsia down to about one in 10, it's definitely something, or I should say a bad outcome that is not that tough to avoid. All right, anxiety. Interesting little study when it came to anxiety, and the title of the study was Anxiety May Be in Your Gut, Not in Your Head. And this study was conducted by McMaster University and also appears in the online edition of the Journal of Gastroenterology. They discovered this. When they were working with animals and mice, the researchers showed that disrupting the normal bacteria content of the gut with antibiotics produced changes in behavior, making the mice less cautious. The change was also accompanied by what they call an increase in brain-derived neurotrophic factors, something called BDNF, which has been directly related to depression and anxiety. Again, amazing. Inducing depression and anxiety just by using antibiotics. Change the bacteria of the gut, change the behavior of the individual. We're not a single cell organism. It all relates. And however, this is the, the kicker. When oral antibiotics were discontinued, the bacteria in the gut returned to normal, and this was accompanied by a restoration of normal behavior in brain chemistry. So, you want to be depressed? You have, do you want to take antibiotics? You know the relationship. What I do, one thing I do recommend, if you have to take antibiotics, get those probiotics real fast and boost up those levels so you don't have that basic withdrawal type effect. They also said too, from antibiotics or infection might produce changes in behavior. They said these results lay the foundation for investigating the therapeutic potential of probiotic bacteria and their products in the treatment of behavioral disorders. Wouldn't it be amazing next time you go to a doctor, he decides to give you basically Lactobillus acidophilus or some other probiotic instead of a Prozac? Think about that. And the door basically something you may want to consider ahead of time. All right. Now, my favorite, the European Medicines Agency. I have nothing kind to say about this group. Everything that's been going on in Europe recently has been everything to reduce self, uh, how would you say, personal sovereignty, self-determination, or basically limit freedoms of the population and what they can and cannot do on their own without 
any good reasons. And you want to hear how good those reasons are? Not published in the British Medical Journal. Drug related regulators are protecting profits over patients warn researchers. As they said, quote, and I want to read most of the quotes, medicines regulators are protecting drug companies' profits rather than the lives and welfare of patients by withholding unpublished trial data, argue the researchers. Despite the existence of hundreds of thousands of clinical trials, doctors are unable to choose the best treatment for their patients because research results are being reported selectively. Pick and choosing. It's like doing a bunch of tests over the school year and picking which tests you want to go to towards your GPA and which ones you don't. Really good, strong luxury. All right, for example, Vioxx caused about 100 unnecessary, 100,000 unnecessary heart attacks in the United States alone. While the antiarrhythmic drugs have probably caused premature death of about 50,000 Americans each year in the 1980s, meaning if they would have published all the data, a lot of lives could have been saved. That's why I think the punishment for these drug companies, which are withholding information at the expense of the population, should be increased, something beyond just a slap on the hand. They also said, and what I should say is this, when the researchers asked the European Medicine Agency to open up the data of all the research done on these drugs, this is what their response was. And this is kind of like a big middle finger to the rest of the population. You ready? Here is their very political diplomatic response to us, you and us, and the researchers and the doctors. The EMA, European Medicine Agency, refused access, arguing that this would undermine commercial interest and that there was no overriding public interest in disclosure. They also cited that the administrative burden involved in the worthlessness of the data after they had edited them would be of no use to the researchers. There is something, myth something wrong fundamentally with our priorities in healthcare. Commercial act success depends on withholding data that are important for rational decision making by doctors and patients. Something really to think about next time you're wondering who's regulating who. And back to that one curiosity question. A good way to sterilize yourself? Cell phones. Researchers realized that even though cell phones increased testosterone, it decreased free testosterone and damaged sperm quality totally in men. Something to think about. Something that you say you can't live without and you cannot reproduce with. Well, thank you very much for that and I appreciate it. Awesome, Ralph. Thank you very much. Once again, research for yourself. Take your health into your own hands. Thank you very much for joining our show.